Hey, welcome back to Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. I am your host, the Duckman. <laughs> We're back today with my 1956 Beetle, and uh, this video is going to be kind of short today because unfortunately my GoPro this time ate up all of my progress. All of my time lapse video is completely chewed up and gone. Uh, I seem to have figured out what's well, I don't know what's wrong with the camera, but at least I know what it does now when it's actually causing a problem. What happens is when I hit the record button, the red lights and everything start coming on and the screen starts doing a choppy video just like it does when it's normally recording time lapse, but the counter doesn't progress. So if I hit the stop button and then go ahead and change the focal point to a lower or higher setting, go back to where it is, hit the record button, then it's fine. I don't understand why it does that. I'm sure it's something to do with the GoPro firmware. I've seen other people on message boards complaining of similar problems, so the GoPro sucks. But at least now I know how to get the work around. Anyway, without too much of this stuff, let's go ahead and just go ahead and tear up this video. Like I said, it's not going to be very long, but uh, hey, you guys, thanks for watching. Please click like just to <laughs> just to help me out in this video because I was really down in the dumps about this one. And this is the reason why it's taken so long for me to upload it. Anyways, thanks for watching, you guys. Appreciate it. Hey, welcome back to Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman. <laughs> back today with my 1956 Beetle, also known as Eleanor. We're working on her hidden hinges today. I'm gonna try to do the final alignment of these things, cut off all the excess, and try to get those doors mounted. I don't know how lucky we're gonna get, but we're gonna try it. So anyways, <laughs> looking at what we've gotta do over here, and I'll take you for the ride. Let's go ahead so you can see too. Meow. What I need to do is I need to uh, trim off the excess here. I need to get them welded in all the way around the edges. I need to get this welded here. And I have a little gap in here I need to fix because this is where I was playing with the hinge distance. Um, once I got that settled, I need to figure out how big of a gap we want to put on this uh, door over here. Now, talking to Earl, that Earl actually came by here this weekend and looked at the car. Now, I don't know if you've seen that video yet because I don't know what order I'm going to be releasing these things in. But Earl told me to go ahead and leave a big gap. He wants a big gap because it's probably going to close up as he starts putting the paint primer and you know the clear on it it's it's going to close it considerably so i'm going to be leaving a little more space in there than i thought i would have but i need to make sure that it clears right now with how it's set up it's kind of a big gap but it does clear if he starts painting on that well it's not going to clear so <laughs> there's a little bit of playing in there that i'm going to do it's not too big of a deal but that's where we're going to jump into today so i think what we're going to do is we're going to Clear, clearance the hinge a little more and bring it a little bit more this way. Same on the bottom, bring it just a little bit more, a few millimeters. I think that'll be enough to give me what I got and uh, we'll go from there. So anyways, like, comment, subscribe, pluck that dingle belly, check out duckshit.net for all my different social media links and we'll be back right after the intro. <laughs> all right, I think that's about as tight as I'm gonna get it. it looks pretty good, uh, I don't have any problems with that. And at this point, when I open it, it's not rubbing at all anymore on anything. I measured that gap out, uh, actually just shoved a file in it. <laughs> and I took that same file around to the driver's side over here and put the file in the gap over here and it was the same width. So while I thought the other side had a much bigger width, uh, it turns out the gap is actually right about the same. And of course I didn't want to leave it too big because if it were too big and there was no possibility for the door to move, then that means that gap is gonna close up. And we don't want a door that's too big to fit in the opening. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out the hinge bracket that's in the inside there, and I'm going to weld the nuts onto it. And that's critical because um, when I'm getting in there, it's, it's going to be practically impossible to tighten those nuts down. So let's go ahead and uh, pull that bracket out, get the nuts welded onto it, drop it back in there, weld it into place, or at least tack weld it into place, snip off some of the excess, and let's see if we can get that door hung. Here we go. All right, now that may not look like a whole lot of progress to you, but... Yeah, no rubbing at all. Everything just fits beautifully. Okay, we're good. I'm going to continue tacking in these hinges, both front and back side. Just get a bunch of tacks on it in case I do have to cut it out one more time and move it. But right now I think it's where I need it to be. 
And once I got that done, I can put the shorter hinges that I have in here and then come around from the inside and start tacking them together onto the adjustable plates that are in there. Once that's all in place, then I should be able to pull that door handle and that door should pop open on these hinges. Fantastic. Okay. Yeah, this is good. This is good. I'm really, really happy with that. No more rubbing. Yay! <laughs> it only needed a couple more millimeters, just a couple more millimeters, and it actually gave it quite a bit of gap. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and get on this here. Whee! I don't know if you can hear it, but the creepy ice cream man just drove down the street in his beat up old panel van. <laughs> but anyway, right here we got our hinges. Um, I started to weld them in a little bit. I started to lop them off because the door is going to fit flush against it, so I couldn't have any of the hinge box sticking out. So I got those clipped off as tight as I can get them, and uh, I think those are going to work out pretty good. The funny thing about these hinges is looking at them, there's an optical illusion. It looks like the bottom one especially is all kicked over this way, but the top one looks straight. But the funny thing is, if I put a level against the both of them, they are absolutely straight. The illusion is from the actual shape of the beetle. The beetle is not straight up and down. So that just goes to show that there is not a single straight panel on a beetle anywhere, except for maybe the, uh, <laughs> the glass. Everything that's metal on a beetle is curved. All right, well, I think we're gonna wrap that up today because today is Taco Tuesday and I have to meet Wild Bill shortly uh, for dinner. I'm actually showing up a little late because he canceled on me and then he reopened the plans and because I was working on this, I made him wait a little longer. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna wrap this up, throw this all in the garage and hopefully if it works out, we'll get to work on it again tomorrow. I'm not sure what order these videos are being released in, but chances are I'll probably be working on this or maybe another Q&A video the day after. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to licky likey, comment, subscribe, pluck that dingle belly, and check out duckshit.net for all my different social media links. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Really appreciate you. See you later.